I just rip out there with my buddy who turned out to be a horrible getaway driver. So I work for a wholesale dealership out of Cleveland called Neo Classics. We have an inventory of probably about 115 cars and we have our turn and burns and then we have our classics and then we just recently picked up a Ferrari that was owned by Kendall Gill uh, from the Chicago Bulls. He bought it brand new, it's a great car. It's the first gated Ferrari I've ever driven. It's, I love them. I absolutely love gated Ferraris. But we're not a buy here, pay here. So what we do is um, every once in a while, some guy might owe 300 bucks. He doesn't have the proper money. So we'll do that. And last month, I had a stack of papers for five cars. It ranged from about 150 bucks to probably about 400 bucks. And then I had one that was outstanding by like three months that I don't know how it slipped through. I think my boss might have called him a few times, but it was for an Audi A8L. It was a big, beautiful lanyard of a car. Most of the customers who come to buy cars from us pay cash in tens and twenties, which is the whole reason. And this is the car why we had to buy a money counter. We didn't set up a payment plan with the guy because we're not a buy here, pay here. We, it was just a good gesture for us because they, when they showed up to buy the car, the guy was all hard. And then when the car was sitting out front with the temp tag on, he was like a little girl in a candy store. He's like, yeah, I want this car, I want this. Oh, I'm so happy for this. They were driving an ML350 with temp tags on it. So somehow this guy, I feel like they came into money recently doing whatever he did for a living. So we ended up dealing with this guy and he's like, I'll be back next week to pay the toll. And when he came in with a substantial amount of cash for this car, I kind of assumed he'll be back for it. And he didn't. So the temp tag was 45 days and I think it was on day 60. So I'm like, you know what? The, the car was still in our name because he never came back for the title. I had a set of keys for it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go get this car. So I Google the guy's address and it's a trailer park on the west side of Cleveland. About, it's probably like an hour and a half outside of the west side. And I'm Cleveland, I'm on the east side. So I, I go on the, on the book face and I'm like, hey, anybody want to go with me to go get this car? Because I need to get this car back now. So we, we jump in this uh, C300 we got and... I just rip out there with my buddy who turned out to be a horrible getaway driver. We get to this trailer park, we drive, we circle around, I circle around, and of course it's the nicest car in this trailer park. And I hit the unlock button as I go past, and it makes the loudest click that I swore echoed off of every trailer in this place. And I'm like, crap. So we circle around again, and in the meantime, the whole cul-de-sac for this trailer park has six inch uh, speed bumps, which are horrible for getting around, you got to crawl over it doing two miles an hour. So we pull back around. I drive down about three trailers and I get out and I just leisurely walk up the, the car and I jump in the car and I take the key and I go to put it in the slot that a lot of Audis have. And there's no slot there. It was a push button. So that was my first mistake. So I sit there and I push the, I push the start button and it takes like three to four seconds to start, which seems like an eternity when this is happening. And I told my buddy, drive around in case, uh, around the cul-de-sac in case I got to jump back in. And by the time I get the car started and out of this driveway, I don't see him. I'm like, where did he go? So I, I fly over these stupid speed bumps and I jump out and I make a right and then a right again. Because this trailer backed up to a main road. And my biggest fear was this guy's gonna come out of this main road shooting at me that his car just got stolen. I fly back up, I pass the trailer, and I look to the corner, and my, that just then's when my buddy pulls up. I'm like, crap. Because he, he had my license plate, he had everything in this car. We were supposed to meet at the gas station around the corner. And I just go, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And before all this started, I called my buddy Johnny Sabo. Because I knew his detail shop was there, right there. His car storage place was right there. Because I wanted to get to his shop so I could check this car over with a pair of gloves. Just in case there's some sort of substance in this car. Because I didn't feel like driving the two, two and a half hours home. And his shop turns out to be 30 miles away from where I was. And I thought it was way close. I'm like, really? So I, I fly up there. I, I'm driving down the freeway. No license plate on this car. I pass three state troopers in this 30 miles. I'm like, oh God. They're going to really pull me over for this. And I got to explain this because I have no clue where this, where my getaway driver's at, who's got my license plate, who's not picking up his phone. I come whipping in there. I whip around the building. I see his uh, GT3 RS that he had at the time sitting there. I'm like, good. He's, this is the right location at his other shop. So I open the door and I rush in. I'm like, dude, I need a pair of gloves right now. And there's two local police officers just standing there, leaned up against the pickup truck. And they look at me and I look at them. And then they look back at me more concerning and I'm like, it's fine. I need a pair of gloves. 
and one of them reaches in his little thing and he pulls out two pairs of gloves and hands them to me and I walk back out. And I guess as soon as I walked back out, they just erupt hysterically. And John's like, yeah, he's always like that. I search this car top to bottom. And as I'm searching this car is when I get the call from the guy. He's like, I'm gonna see you tomorrow with, with the money for it. I'm like, okay. And so I drive the car back to the shop. I, I run it through a car wash because it had been sitting. And my friend who I paid to um, go to scope the car out who lived in the area, he's like, I know this car because he worked at the Audi dealership. The car was just in getting a full service done. So the money he owed on the car, he spent doing the full service instead of paying the car off. And then he just kind of forgot about paying the car off. So I get it back to one of our storage facilities and I back it in and it's all good. And then the guy's wife calls. Where's my car at? What? You mean my car? No, where's my car? I'm like, no, it's my car. And then she calls her husband and her husband calls me back and they're like, we'll be there. They didn't show up for three more weeks. The car sat collecting dust. I charged them a storage fee, a, rep a $600 repo fee to waste my time driving out there because I ain't a repo man. And I kind of pooped my pants doing some of this stuff. So we accept unique payment terms to sell people cars they can't normally afford to make them happy in the long run because they send their friends to us because we take anything on trade and any sort of credit. Oh, the one time I sat there counting out $22,000 for an hour. It was before, this was pre-money counter days. And then this second deal with this Audi is like, yeah, we need a money counter right now. And our, our inventory is pretty unique. We buy everything and I love it. My, me, myself, I'm a C4 fanatic. So I buy every low mile C4 I can get. I love the C4 Corvette because it's one of the greatest Corvettes ever made in my opinion. Back in the end of November, I, I did construction my entire life. And it got to the point where I, I'm tired of this. I'm about to be 30. So I, I quit and I bought a bunch of cars. I spent 30 grand in cars. I bought GTOs because those are cars that are on the up. I'd buy the cheapest ones in the country, fly out, drive it back, have an adventure. And I loved it. And then COVID hit and I lost everything. I didn't really lose everything. I, I got back to where I was, what I started with. And my buddy saw that and he's like, dude, I need help. Just come work for me. And it's been a match made in heaven because he lets me do whatever I want. I drive whatever I want. I, um, I have an open checkbook to buy whatever I want as long as I can make money on it. And I've bought cars off of multiple friends that, a lot of cannonball guys. I bought cars off of Doug Tabbitt, stuff that he doesn't want, doesn't want to sell. It's been great. And I've made a lot of money doing it and I love it. And the thing is when you, people say you find out your life in your thirties and I think I pretty much figured out my life is wanting to be the biggest C4 Corvette wholesaler in the Midwest. I'm not someone that can walk into a main franchise dealership and sell cars that way. I like selling the cars that are rebuilt wrecks, polished turds, but I, I don't sell junk. When you're in the wholesale dealership, most of them start off as junk. You have to make them good cars to sell. And when you sell them, like, and we never have any issues, nobody comes back to us trying, oh, you sold me junk. They come back and buy more cars from us. And out of the 115 cars in my inventory currently, about 50 of them are for sale. The rest are out at shops getting rebuilt, getting body work done. Because I don't buy anything from auctions. Everything I buy from comes from de major dealerships. Because buying from auctions, you don't get quality. There's too much stuff out there. There's too many issues. The prices are going up. And right now, during the used car market, during this COVID, when all the manufacturers shut down for months, the used car market, boom. We were selling 37 cars a month, which is great numbers for a dealership like ours. And we're, we're on the up and up. We're trying to grow and be the best we can be. We want to be two times what we are. Ne by next year, I want to triple our size. And I got a feeling I can do it. And my buddies have faith in me and stuff. I don't think his brother does, but my boss has faith in me. And that's my repo story. We'd like to thank Avalon King for their continued support of the VinWiki YouTube channel. From crazy projects like Casey's King Zero to shooting derelict AMG cars off of a cliff in Alaska, they're interested in a whole lot more with respect to the automotive hobby than just making our cars look great. But the ceramic coating is awesome and you can get it with for $25 off at the link in the description below. So be sure to check it out, try it on your car, let us know what you think in the comments and let them continue to support idiots like us.